we have prepared a detailed step-by-step -step pan, zoom, scroll, navigation and canvas features tutorial for you about the new Microsoft Paint after Windows 11. This is the second in a series of comprehensive and detailed tutorials for beginners and those who want to learn about the new Microsoft Paint post Windows 11. To get the most out of this training, following this content and our previous and subsequent or other related trainings that we publish in series will help you understand and achieve much more. As soon as we open the program, we are greeted by a workspace with a white canvas in the middle and a new Microsoft Paint that blends classic and modern style. The canvas is the image space inside the workspace, you can think of it like a real-life canvas. This is where the image is created and organized. On the right side of the status bar you can see the zoom settings and on the left side you can see information showing the aspect ratio of the current canvas in pixels. The last frame width we turned on was 4K and we can change it at any time. From the file menu we can open the image properties window to see and change various settings. As you can see, here we can change the units and quantities of canvas aspect measurements in pixels, inches and centimeter and set the default setting here. The default setting sets a canvas aspect ratio that is automatically determined when the program is opened. Fit to window is also a new feature. Instead of a canvas layout stuck in the top left corner, the new canvas layout in the center of the workspace provides a more user-friendly and practical interface. At the bottom right are the zoom in and zoom out presets and scroll bars. In addition to the presets, you can also enter a numerical zoom value. The slider bar for zooming in and out is even more useful because it is more responsive and intuitive. It is possible to zoom in and out from 25% to 2000% on the workspace or canvas. We write canvas in the center of the canvas with a calligraphy pen to explain and show the canvas and navigation features in more detail. Besides the slider bar for zooming in and out, another option is the magnifying glass tool, which allows zooming in by focusing. For navigation, especially for zooming in and out focusing on a specific area of the canvas space, the magnifying glass tool above also has extra conveniences and benefits. It is a very important tool to focus on an area and will help you a lot in navigation. For example, when I zoom in and out from where I've marked the top left corner, it allows me to zoom in and out towards the workspace and that area of the canvas. You can zoom in with the left button and zoom out with the right button. In the view settings above, there are options to zoom in 100%, zoom in and out, and other options such as fit to window. The same options are available at the bottom right. The slider bar for zooming in and out at the bottom right is even more useful because it is more responsive and intuitive to use. The hotkey combination control and zero also provides 100% zoom. In the view section there is an option to view full screen, which also works with the F11 key. With all this, many practical features have been retained that you won't be unfamiliar with. For example, you can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel and the zoom in and out control. You can zoom in and out by holding down the control key and moving the mouse wheel. You can see left and right scroll bars just above the status bar, as well as vertically oriented up and down scroll bars on the right side of the workspace. These left and right or up and down scroll bars appear automatically when the canvas overflows from the screen in the viewport. You can move up and down in the workspace using only the mouse wheel, except for the up and down scroll bars. You can toggle the rulers on and off in the view section or with the control and R key combination. In the appearance section, you can turn off or make the status bar invisible and turn it back on at any time to save more space in the workspace.
The thumbnail window can be used as a small window summary, a view that covers the entire canvas. You can move and resize this thumbnail window as you work. When you zoom in, it gives the impression of a ready-made summary without switching to a view of the whole image. We can turn grids on and off in the appearance section. Grids also make the appearance of pixels more distinct. After maximum zoom, we can use the pixel pen to make precise drawings and edits at the pixel level, making it possible to create pixel artworks. Let's make the example even more concrete by drawing an arrow symbol by coloring the pixels one by one, starting from the 0x0 zero zero pixel box in the upper left corner. Let's do the same below, starting with the last pixel box in the bottom right corner. When we change the display properties to centimeter, pixels and inches, the frame unit in the status bar also changes. We double the canvas size by resizing it in percentage. The pixel size is also automatically doubled. We cancel the transaction by undoing it. Whereas previous versions had a fixed, clunky and problematic canvas in the top left corner of the workspace, the new Microsoft Paint now has a more useful and successful canvas system that you can freely resize from every corner and edge. You can see the current aspect ratio in the status bar. When you resize the canvas, the aspect ratio in pixels in the status bar will be updated and displayed again. At the corners and edges of the canvas appear ears or small boxes that we can use for sizing. With eight tabs or boxes at the corners and edges of the canvas, we can freely resize the canvas by drag and drop. Also, as we mentioned earlier, with the resize command, we can resize the canvas in pixels or percentages, and it is up to you whether you want to keep the aspect ratio or not. We can collapse or crop the canvas by dragging and dropping boxes and tabs on the edges of the canvas. We can select an area on the canvas using one of the selection commands, for example, the rectangle selection tool and then use the crop command to crop the canvas and define its new boundaries. Going back to the resizing options, here we will use an interesting pixelization method where we can step by step reduce the existing work to a very small size and get a pixel art-like look. This method can be useful as a way to manage the transformation of different works into pixel art. With the rotation options in the image command section, we can rotate the selected area or the entire canvas. If there is no selected area, the rotation will rotate the canvas. Rotation options include 90 degree clockwise and counterclockwise rotation or 180 degree rotation as well as vertical and horizontal flip commands. When you make layers visible and create a new layer, you can see that the new layer is automatically created in the aspect ratio of the existing first layer, but transparently. If you have no experience with the layers system, you can think of it as a new transparent canvas, or you can think of it as pages stacked on top of each other. You can either use it transparently or assign it a background color. We will discuss the detailed work on layers in more detail in the following sections. However, let's talk about some of its key features. You can make any layer in the workspace visible or invisible at any time, and you can also change their order. The resize command affects the entire canvas and all layers if there is no selected area. 
If there is a selected area, only the selected area is affected, not the canvas or layers. However, if you run the crop command on the selected area, it affects the entire canvas and all layers because the crop command is a canvas command. In the image command section there is a revolutionary new AI feature, the automatic background removal command. With this command we removed the white color behind the text and the two layers became transparent. We created a new layer above the bottom selected layer and then moved this third new layer to the bottom row. We give the third transparent blank layer a full white color with the bucket tool and use it as a background color layer during the layer below. We can use this and more to manage the creation of complex and new designs and we will provide more examples later when we go into layers in detail. For now, we are reversing our actions. When we save the current work as PNG on the desktop, all visible layers are merged and the visible image in the workspace is transferred and saved. Finally, we mentioned it before, but let's show it in practice. If we change the canvas unit settings in the image settings, the units and measurements that appear in the ruler will also change. If pixels, the rulers will change and update according to the pixels, centimeter, or inches. In this tutorial we gave a detailed step-by-step -step overview of the pan, zoom, scroll, navigation and canvas features in the new version of Paint. In future tutorials we will cover the new features of Paint in more detail and even try to explain in full detail the use and application of all the tools. Of course, We'll learn how to do more complex things with layers using revolutionary new features, the advantages of background removal, and even dive deeper into creating AI-powered images. Let's keep exploring the new version of Paint together and unleash our creativity. We will continue the series with more beautiful trainings and we will be with you again very soon. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to receive notifications for new videos. See you again soon and thanks for watching.